Hi guys and welcome to this video where I'm going to quickly go over seven mistakes that junior programmers typically make and some seasoned programmers can also make. If you want more free content and you want loads of other stuff on programming then go ahead and click that like button, hit that subscribe button and give us a big thumbs up. Now let's get on with the video. Can you spend more time learning? Can you spend more time developing your skill set? Yes, you could, even if it's not related to the exact problem that you're on. Let's say you're really stuck on a problem. Can you learn anything else? Maybe a bit of CSS, maybe a bit of this, maybe a bit of that. Don't necessarily hunker yourself down onto one task. Normally, choose a fairly big task or ask your manager, say, okay, well, there's a fairly big task, something that pushes my skill set and something that you know you could do fairly easily. That way, if there is some time, you could deal with that easy problem. And then when it's a bit more complicated, you've got a bit more time, but you can move on to multi multitasking, make yourself multi-threaded, multitasking. And uh, the other thing is obviously your behavior. A lot of junior programmers are kind of maybe intimidated by the senior or potentially they're approaching the senior in the wrong way. Approach with confidence, and the only way you can do that is if you ask the right questions and think about what you're asking before you ask it. That will definitely be beneficial. But this has happened quite a long time and this is what junior programmers typically do. Is it? So how do I install that again? So we've all had it when we have a junior programmer and you're a senior programmer and if you're a junior programmer then you may spot this mistake which is number one asking the wrong type of question. If you start asking questions and too many questions people will get frustrated with you and you won't get a very good answer. And also, if you ask very lethargic questions, so if you don't put good thought into your question, be more specific about what you're asking for. This is something that's really important and you must adopt. Whenever you ask a question, make it more like thinking how to be a programmer. So I need to be specific about the issues that I'm currently having. I need to think, okay, this particular config file, this particular thing because more than likely the senior programmer will go ahead and Google something if they don't know the answer and they need to know a bit more specifically about what you're trying to do. And if you ask that question more specifically, they won't go through the process that you maybe went through when you try to find the answer. They will go more directly to the issue that you're currently facing. And hopefully that will mean that you will save both the senior programmer's time, which costs more, and your time, which is a junior programmer, so that the whole thing costs less to the business and you're thinking a little bit more about what you're uh, asking and how you're asking it. No, 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 don't, don't, don't do this. Don't, don't start. Sometimes self-learning is the best learning. Sometimes not asking your coworkers necessarily for an answer. I know that it's very easy and very tempting when someone has more experience than you, but don't forget they've got their daily job to get on with. So. Sometimes with junior programmers, you've got more time on tasks and that time usually involves you learning and growing. So use the tools. Google is a geek's best friend. Use that Google, Google that bad boy and go through Stack Overflow is usually the best option because they provide easy support and solutions to questions. So try to examine documentation, try to learn how things are put together. Go on YouTube and look at videos. As a junior programmer, you have a lot more leniency than let's say a senior programmer. And so your performance is not only just based on what you're producing, but it can also be based on what you're learning as well and how quickly you're learning that. And if you're not always asking the senior programmers, they're gonna like that, which puts you in a better position to be promoted later on. And it works out for the company. So the next thing is not taking notes properly. A lot of the time, junior programmers don't realize that they're asking the same question several times. You might have asked two or three days ago. 
but you didn't take note on the answer and therefore you cause a lot of frustration in the team because you're always asking a very similar or if not exactly the same question two or three days later. Always take notes. Even as a senior programmer, notes are very powerful. I recommend Evernote. There's many note taking applications. That's just one of them. And you know, it's in the cloud and you can share it on multiple machines. But the beauty about that is you've actually got a place where you're writing down the things that you understand and grasp at the beginning. So how to set up a project, how to do things. There's been no end of times where this has happened. Yep. So how do I install that again? The next one is crucial to learning quickly and it's talking about architecture. We're not talking about learning specifics in the language. Too often junior programmers think that the actual programming part is necessarily it. It's not. Programming languages on their surface aren't actually relatively too complicated but architectures are because that is the way we design programs and the way you design programs yes there are certain ways of designing but there's multiple ways in which things come together and that makes it uh, you're going from junior to more senior when you start looking at application architecture also it gives you better understanding so if for example a senior programmer says well go ahead and add that module have you studied the architecture to know where the modules folder is and then looked at the modules within them have you spent the time looking at the architecture of the application so that if they add you to add a package or if they tell you to look at a certain thing you'll be able to go in the general area this will actually impress your boss and impress your senior programmer and of course that goes well in your stead so study architecture that is something that's very important look at design patterns it's not all necessarily about coding it's more about how things are pieced together how things communicate and network together those things are incredibly important probably more important than you know necessarily diving straight into the code where you could make a lot of mistakes if you don't know the architecture and that can also cause problems Parallel your learning. It's usually nowadays there's not just one thing that you have to learn. So architecture is a great way to start learning how applications are put together. This is something that junior programmers get tripped up on. Do that first. The second thing to expediting your learning is parallel learning. Look, most programming languages have variables. Some of them are dynamic. Some of them are static. Some have these things called conditionals, loops. All of these programming languages have conditional loops, variables, memory pointers, uh, a whole array of things and functions and classes and object constructors. So when you learn something, can you take that skill and transport it like an architecture in programming? Can you take that skill and move it into multiple places? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't want you to fracture your learning but if you can take that and then actually go, oh, well, I've noticed this in PHP and this in JavaScript, they're both dynamically typed and I've, I've got these variables here and I've got constants and these functions are kind of working in a similar kind of fashion and here's the difference. That is when you start parallel learning where you're scaling horizontally your knowledge. A lot of programmers are vertical scaling. So vertical scaling is when you're expanding your skill set in one specific thing but nowadays there's multiple things that run a front end, multiple things that run a website. So you're horizontally scaling across uh, multiple languages and multiple skill sets. Now this is where seasoned programmers can go wrong as well as junior programmers. There should be a process put in place. If there isn't, then your senior person should be doing that. Uh, but there should be a process in which you do a task and then you put that onto the flow in Jira. So you say, right, once I finish the task, I go to this task. Once I go to that task, you go to that task, right? And so once you've done that and then also do the code reviews and where to push and pull the code from and how you generally work in a workflow. When you sit down at a new company, I mean, it's, it's bad practice. A lot of companies aren't very good at this, which is they define a process and they teach that process from the outset. Just something simple like tagging your commits, squashing your commits. If you don't know what they are, then I'll create a video on Git and so forth. But 
The whole point about it is that if you know the kind of process you have to go through to submit code, to modify code and to do it properly, then you will annoy your team members less and it shows an ambition to learn not just programming languages, but the business practices that that current business employs. And you'll keep your senior programmers fairly happy. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Maybe it made you laugh a little bit, but also, you know, hopefully that will steer you right in your career. If you want loads more tips and tricks, if you want to join the Avalex mailing list, sign up to the push notifications on avalex.co.uk, which is one of the more reasons why you should join us on avalex.co.uk. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, give us a big thumbs up. And here are some more videos that I think you'll find interesting.